just picked up your AR-15. Yep. It's the closest thing you're going to get in the civilian world to the carry. M16 that you carried. How do you feel? Uh, tickled to death because I had, I had it's registered with ATF, but <clears throat> being as I'm not. Crazy. I shouldn't have a bit of problem. Now they used to have a side door where you can just go in and shoot at the shooting range. Uh -huh. I'm gonna try that first, and you have to pay to do that. But <sighs> might have to rent some muffs and some ear buy some earplugs, but. I don't imagine that's going to bust me up too bad. Yeah, that, I got some money. Yeah, that, or is there a Walmart around here? We can just grab some earplugs. Nah, it'd be, be better just going down there. Oh, okay. yeah. They said that they have a carrying case for that M16 at Walmart. Yeah, I heard him say it's like a a real padded soft soft case with the yeah. side pockets. Said it wasn't just a piece of a plastic shell and said it had foam padding in it. And uh, Robert, he's a, I won't say a gun nut, but he's, he's been looking to take and buy one. And of course, you look how long it took me to buy one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could have bought one brand new, brand new years ago when uh, the youngins was little for about three hundred dollars. Oh wow. Yeah, same thing back back, back there. But that looks brand new right back there. Yeah. It's like it ain't never been fired. Yeah, it's been yeah. fired. It had some carbon on it, but they he he gave it a at least a good once over, so uh, what I was gonna say about that rifle is I'm uh, I'm just uh, there's, truck, just, there's a truck behind you right now. There's just there's just uh, certain things that I want as far as you know, there's a car back there too. After this car, white car passes you by on that side. Alright, you should be good. Yep. Yep, you're good. Well, I drove right by the turn lane right there. I was paying attention to the people in front of me. That's all right. We're not in a rush. No. If you had to narrow it down to just one memory, what what's the strongest memory you have of Vietnam? Yeah, it's be it'd be a bad. That's when. Uh, Kenneth Barry got killed. Who was Kenneth Barry? I mean, he I was a sergeant. He got killed in an air assault that we shouldn't have never made. It's bad when you take and get as old as I am, and it's been about it's been about five or six years ago that I took and went and was watching the military channel and. Uh, they took and went and had a, they was talking about four different units that the NVA was at. And I remember how it was that we had took and went and made an assault on the 7th, 
Vietnamese, 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 the South Vietnamese, not South Vietnamese, the North, the Seventh North Vietnamese uh, Regimental Army can command. It's what we took when we got in and flew in on that that morning, and they had that thing ringed with anti-aircraft fire, and. Uh, the first flight went out just fine. I mean, it was textbook. But well, I'm here to tell you, the next flight went in. That was us. And Will, you could see the anti-aircraft fire coming up out of the jungle. Looked like big, big green baseballs coming up out of there. And the bad thing part, and you could see them going past the ship, but you couldn't take and you couldn't see the ones that wasn't tracers. So ever. Three, three or four rounds, they was a tracer. And uh, they just capped them off like they was well armed down there. And uh, they they didn't go on. They they, they took and avoided uh, the mission. And anyhow, they pulled up and we did get out of it. And there was four lift ships and we went back and we was going in a pattern there for a while and flying in that pattern you could see the anti-aircraft fire over there. I've seen all kinds of anti-aircraft fire from World War II and it was as bad as any of you'd see on that kind of thing. And there at one time the guy told him, we asked him what was going to do and, and the door gunner took him and put his finger up in the air and went Shh, like that like it was going in. We had a guy that had less than 45 days left in the military on that ship was he was short when he got there as they say but anyway they took and went and uh, uh, then he finally said that they wasn't going back in it's going to pull them out I seen the F-4 Phantoms go through that any aircraft fire go in and dry, drop 500 pound bombs like two 500 pound bombs at the time and uh, they finally got everybody out except KB because he fell away from where, you know, away from where he was at. But when KB, the ship that he was on, got hit, it looked like somebody just took that ship and lifted it up like that. It, and it just almost immediately it burst into flames. Was it on the ground or was uh, it, it in the air? I was still in the air. And, that and you've seen all these World War II movies where they're shooting them Japanese planes down mm -hmm. and they're crashing in, in on fire going down. Well, I've seen a Huey doing that same thing. Two, let's see, I mean, it's Johnson. Uh, there was three guys on that ship. They got bad, burnt. Johnson got part of his hair. So, no, nah, I'm going on down. I'm, this is. I'm just going to go 74 down there. My turn, turn down there. Okay. Because if I'm, I just have to drive over there and get back off anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But anyway, I. I seen him come out of that ship when he got, when it exploded, burst into flames. He come out the door, and I was seeing, I was, it was, it was bad, man. How do you deal with it? I, I mean, every day, just try to take and do what I can. And, uh, it's bad to see somebody you've known in a predicament like we was in over there. But what's even worse is being that you've known these people for over a year. You went out and drunk with them and had a good time with them and stuff like that. And then they start getting killed off. There's nothing you can do about it. No. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, There was a guy named Coleman 
he was a sergeant. He had already had one tour in Nam. He volunteered to go back. And I'll tell you why he'd done that, because he figured he'd come back over there. And we was a new unit and everything, and he'd come back over there, and he'd come back from Vietnam being an E-6. Well, he never, he never made E-6. He got shot in, shot in the head. Mm. Didn't kill him. At least ways he wasn't dead when we put him on the chopper, and I never heard nobody say that he died. So I just assumed that he never did. That he, and uh, that's that's the things that you remember right there. You see, see your friends burnt and maimed. The. Uh, Vasquez, the guy that, that got, he got burnt real bad from his boot tops to his crotch. He was on that helicopter. He, uh, he went to the burn center in, in Texas. I don't know, Houston, San Antonio, one of the big cities out there. He went to the burn center there. And he, uh, he got all right. He was getting, he was getting well to have healed up. And it was 50 miles from where he lived at. Oh, wow, so it was at least close to home. Yeah, he, family could come visit him anytime he wanted to. And he could, you know, as a, you know, after he got, you know, got, uh, you know, he got healed up enough to where he could get going, go ever horse. He'd, uh, he'd be, uh, he'd be close to home. And, and the thing of it is, if they, if they didn't discharge him, if they kept him, he wouldn't have to do nothing. You know, he wouldn't have to get out and do PT or anything like that. He'd just spend the rest of his time left in service, you know, sitting around some more. Well, I've seen plenty of guys that would have been let go, sent back home, and the only reason he didn't at the time, well, they just wouldn't let him home. They paid, they paid what they was making in the military. At one time, after they raised pay, they raised pay before I come home. And I, I tell you right now, that, that tempted me there for a while. And I was making more in the military than I would be when I got back home. And that's just how poor, poorly they paid back in the day. And uh, let's see. how poorly they paid back in the day. And I took and went and, uh, so I come on home. And my first sergeant, he tried to give me a, a re-up. Told me he'd make me an E-5 if I re-enlisted. I told him, I said, go ahead and make me, re re make me an E-5 now. And I said, I'll think about it real serious. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he'd have made me an E-5 and I'd have left, and getting out of the military, he wouldn't have lost a slot. He had right. a slot and come back. And I tried to explain it to him. No, we are going to do that. But anyway, I took him one on, come on home. And I run into a guy in California. He was fixing to get on an airplane. He had re-enlisted. He was going home for 30 days. Of course, uh, If I hadn't have been, if I hadn't been a ground pounder, if I hadn't have been a ground pounder, now they might have been, I might have been, my, my, I might have been, I might have been, uh, maybe stayed in there a little bit longer. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I messed up. I should have went one more. Yeah. Were you drafted or did you uh, enlist? Drafted. You were drafted. I was drafted. Would you have enlisted otherwise? You think? No, I wouldn't win. But after I got into the military, I'm all right. I took 
check and whatnot. Uh, I forget how many how many points I like. But I just like a few points to make an E4, an E4, an E4, an E4, an E2 out of basic training. Oh wow, that would be nice. I wish I could run as good as I could back in the day. <laughs> Amen. Did you ever break? Did you? How long was the fastest mile you ever run? Um. Well, we had the we didn't have a one mile. We had a two mile. My fastest two mile time was like 11 minutes and 28 seconds, I think. So that'd been what six, you know, five minutes and 45 seconds. I'm gonna take a run, run, run a mile. Run a mile, best mile ever run, 4.15. Wow. With boots. Not tennis shoes, boots. 4.15. Everybody run boots on when I was in the military. And that's one thing I can't understand now is why, why they, why, why after, after a while, you know, they, they put you out there with boots on. Why don't they take you, work in them boots and get your feet moving? And a lot of people have trouble with their ankles and uh, them boots give you good ankle support but I was in the black boot army when I went in we had a uh, nine nine hole lace up boots mm -hmm. and then before we went to Vietnam they gave us two brand new pair of size 11 or size 11 7 took a size 12 white brand new and we had to wear them things we wore them stateside and oh I don't shoot I tell you, you just can't believe as many, as many times as I've, I've had some sergeant stop me or stop a bunch of us that you ain't allowed to wear them over here. Uh, and then when you tell them, well, man, we're going to Nam, and I said they told us to break in our boots before we got there. It's like I uh, like put a 10 pound weight on his chin. Here. <laughs> Did they have extra plating in the bottom, or they had the. Uh, uh, the bungee or bungee piece in there. Oh, the, bun, the, the bungee stick, pudgy stick. Yeah, had that had that thing in there. You could hear it. You could hear it uh, flexing in there. Uh, I'll tell you something that was that run out, wore out real quick. That was shoelaces. If you laced your shoes up would be long after, you know, after wearing them and getting them wet all, getting them wet, but they'd, they'd, they'd rot them. It wouldn't be long before you'd have to have another pair of them. So, uh, basically what we done was we'd go to one of these little PXs they had and buy, and these were uh, brass plated zippers. Mm -hmm. And we'd get a pair, and, and You'd take and lace them up in your boots, and uh, one one boot lace would lace up, lace them up. But what that was for, uh, when you have to get up in a hurry, you could pick up your boot and, and smack it one time, stick it on, smack that, and zip them up, and you'd then be ready to rock and roll. Like speed laces, it just zip, just a just zipper right up the middle of them. And uh, when we got. We had people come back to Vietnam, and uh, some of them had their, had still had their uh, had their uh, jungle boots, and fell fall out and have them laces, uh, them zippers and laced in there. Sergeant, tell them, you can wear them boots. Do you get you something to wear? But you're gonna take them zippers out. Pick them zippers out. I had a guy, he come back from Nam, he was so gung ho, I thought he was gonna take and split wide open sometimes. He was telling me and he was talking to me about this, that and the other. I remember his pep talk he gave me, he said, said, John, you won't last a day in Vietnam. That's supposed to be a pep talk? Yeah. <laughs> I remember it, man. He's 
thought that was a real good point or something. And he wanted me to know that. But I remember the first day we went out on patrol. We got shot at every, just about every step of the way. Might almost be better served to go ahead and park in the handicapped spot. I don't have a placard with me. Oh. There's a one that's coming out over on that other side. Okay. Well, that's the door right there. The yellow door there. Mm-hmm. The yaller door. The yaller? <laughs> the yaller door. Getting out. 